The head of the German Bishops Conference says that he will step down at the end of his term next month. Cardinal Reinhard Marx says that he is not seeking a second term because of his age, and he wants to spend more time in his role as the Archbishop of Munich and Freising. The 66-year-old says that he supports discussions in Germany over the role of women in the church and how Catholics will address the clergy sexual abuse crisis. The Knights of Columbus celebrate 100 years of their permanent residence in Rome. The Knights' work in Rome started as an invitation from Pope Benedict XV back in 1920 to help in the aftermath of World War I. The largest Catholic fraternal service organization continues support the Vatican through funding television and radio projects and recently through a series of art restorations. Carl Anderson, Supreme Knight of the Knights of Columbus, joins us now from Rome. Thank you for joining us today. No, thank you. So what has been the biggest impact over the last 100 years in Rome? Well, for us, you know, we started with uh, sports fields at the request of Pope Benedict XV. And I think uh, being in Rome, but most importantly, being in solidarity with nine different popes, has been a tremendous encouragement for us to continue with our work of charity. So we've developed more programs in Rome, but I think even more importantly, it's helped us be better Knights of Columbus in the United States and Mexico and Canada and the Philippines. I know you met with Pope Francis yesterday. What was your takeaway from his message? It's always a great privilege to be in the presence of the Holy Father, and especially with Pope Francis, you can feel his genuine concern and warmth uh, for works of charity to help the poor, the marginalized, people who are suffering. And so we talked about the programs of the Knights of Columbus in charity, in unity, uh, defending the right to life and the sanctity of life, helping Christian refugees in the Middle East. And what he called uh, the Knights of Columbus testimony and witness uh, against a globalization of indifference. And so wonderful inspirational meeting with our Holy Father. And how do the Knights continue to support the Pope as well as the Vatican? Well, I would say we really have had three general areas of support, and it all comes under the category of the Second Vatican Council, Lumen Gentium, that talked about the laity working to transform society by uh, transmitting the values of the gospel. So first, we have been working with the Vatican Communications Office for many, many decades to bring the message of the Holy Father through radio, television, internet, in activities such as World Youth Day, a world meeting of families with the Pope, his uh, Christmas Mass, uh, Good Friday and Holy Week services, Easter services. So communicating his message globally. Then the second thing we've been doing is working with various agencies and dicasteries at the Vatican in terms of the work of evangelization. So the Pontifical Commission for Latin America, uh, the Pontifical Council for the Family and the Laity and Social Communications had long uh, working partnerships with many of these dicasteries to further the work of evangelization. And then finally, uh, we've been working with the what they call the Fabrica di San Pietro, which is the office at St. Peter's in the Vatican that protects the great artistic and spiritual patrimony of the Holy See. So we've helped repair the facade of St. Peter's. We've helped restore priceless works of art. We've helped uh, re restore the Moderno Atrium. And that's a continuing work uh, that we're very proud of because this is not only uh, a, as I say, a patrimony of humanity, but it is a way of focusing and uplifting the spiritual values and spiritual dignity of people. So three ways of communication, one through great art, one through the work of evangelization itself, and then the other to make available through means of modern communication the ability of the Holy Father to reach billions of people around the world. I know under your leadership, the Knights of Columbus has donated more than 700 million hours of service to charity and over $1.5 billion to charity. What new projects are you working on this year? Well, we continue our work with the Christians at risk in the Middle East. We're helping to build new buildings at the Catholic University of Erbil in Iraq. Uh, we're continuing our work for our second responders program. So when there's disaster strike, either in the United States with hurricanes or earthquakes, 
or in the Philippines with typhoons or floods in Mexico. We're there with help for the people affected. Uh, we're also very strong this year on pro-life. And we've had uh, some tremendous polling over the past decade, which shows a majority of the American people unhappy with the kind of unrestricted abortion regime that we have in the United States. They want it to change. We're going to continue to work uh, to see that we enhance the ability of the law to protect the right to life of the unborn. So those are three great areas. Also, we're going to be working to just strengthen the local councils uh, strengthen the fraternal life of our knights, uh, strengthen and try to evangelize to a greater degree our Catholic families and especially our Catholic youth to help Catholic parents transmit the faith to their children and the next generation of Catholics. So I'd say broadly that's what our focus is going to be in the upcoming year. Well, thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for all that you're doing. Carl Anderson, Supreme Knight of the Knights of Columbus. Thank you again. Thank you very much.